Welcome to CCS Quick Tips. This quick tip will demonstrate how to use the Trace Visualization Toolkit to capture core trace data on a running target and visualize the data in CCS. The target that we will use is the AM243X Launchpad. This launchpad supports core trace using the Embedded Trace Buffer, or ETB for short. It is a small circular on-chip memory area where trace information is stored during capture. The data captured in this buffer can then be read out to CCS using the existing XDS110 connection on the launchpad. I currently have a debug session started for the launchpad. The target is connected to CCS, and the GPIO LED blink example for the R5 core is loaded and halted at main. Under the Tools Code Analysis menu, I will select the first option to capture core trace data which is real-time gathering of instructions being executed by the core. In the Core Trace tab, I have several options available. Filters are used to include or exclude trace data from specific address ranges. Triggers determine when trace collection is active by turning trace on or off instructions that specific addresses are executed. Receiver settings allow you to specify the trace receiver to be used, to specify the buffer type, and specify if trace collection should be synchronized with the target execution. Since the ETB is the only receiver option available for this launchpad, that is the only receiver option available here. I will leave the rest of the options as a default here. Now due to the small size of the ETB, it is not possible to capture core trace data for the entire execution of the program. Hence, I will use triggers to enable and disable trace collection at specific addresses. This will allow me to only capture the trace data that I'm interested in without risk of losing any data if the buffer wraps around. My goal is to enable trace collection only around the part of the code that toggles the GPIO pin that toggles the LED. I am not interested in all the initialization that happens before it, and I do not want to capture trace data while in any delay loops between pin toggles. I found the addresses by looking at the addresses of the disabled breakpoints I have set. Each breakpoint is at a location where I wish to set a start or stop trigger point. So essentially, I want to enable trace collection at line 66, disable it at line 67, then enable it at line 68, and disable it again at line 69. I have the disassembly view open. That way I can easily see the addresses of these breakpoints that I wish to set my triggers on. So let's start adding the triggers. So I'll start trace collection at this address here before the uh, GPIO pin write high call. And I'll disable trace collection at the address when that function call returns. Then I'll enable trace collection again right before the GPIO pin write low call. And finally, I will disable trace collection when that call returns. And I also need to disable this option here so that trace is not auto-enabled from the start. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm only collecting trace data when these two functions are called. Now I can hit OK at the bottom to start the trace session. And let's run the program. My program is running successfully. I can see the L my LED blink. And in 10 seconds, it should halt. 
And then once the program has finished running and the target is halted at the exit point, the captured data in the ETB will be sent to CCS and displayed in the core trace view. Here, you can see the data for each trace entry. Data such as program address, the associated opcode, which function and file it is associated with, and the cycle, and so on. If you have the disassembly view open, selecting a specific trace entry will also jump to the address in the disassembly view. Trace is a very helpful tool to detect complex and intermittent bugs and to profile and fine-tune code performance. Trace is supported in CCS through the use of the Trace Visualization Toolkit. Thank you for watching this quick tip and have a good day.